Have you been told that you have a tilted or retroverted uterus and left with many questions? What does this mean? Does this impact your fertility? How about miscarriage risk or carrying a pregnancy? Well, we are going to learn all about the diagnosis of a retroverted uterus and what it means for your reproductive health today. Welcome to the Brave and Curious podcast, the podcast all about reproductive health, fertility, and wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist who loves educating. And today I'm curious all about the diagnosis of a retroverted uterus and what it can mean for your reproductive health. Let's get started. We're going to go over five main topics. Number one, we're going to talk about what is a retroverted uterus or a tilted uterus. Number two, we're going to go over how common it is. Is this something like really common or really rare? You'll know. Number three, I will let you know if a retroverted uterus impacts your fertility. Topic number four, I will let you know if a retroverted uterus impacts your ability to carry a pregnancy. And number five, I will leave you with what I tell my own patients when I diagnose them with a retroverted uterus so that you know what I say. Now, of course, you always have to talk to your own doctor about your personal situation, but I will let you know what I tell my patients. Topic number one, what is a retroverted uterus? This is talking about the position of the uterus in the body. The uterus can either be antiverted, pointed up towards the bladder, or kind of the front of the abdomen, you know, your belly button, or it can be retroverted and pointed back towards the spine or the rectum. That's it. It's the position of the uterus and it's, you know, are you going frontwards or are you going backwards? Most people find out that they have a retroverted uterus because they have an exam, whether it's from a pelvic exam or an ultrasound. The person doing the exam might say, oh, you have a retroverted uterus or a tilted uterus and just sort of leave it at that. And it's often those patients that think about it later and say, oh, well, is this causing any of my symptoms or my fertility or my pregnancy issues? So it's usually something that's just sort of casually noted on the report from the ultrasound or someone casually notes in a pelvic exam and it really does not usually impact someone clinically. But if you look up retroverted uterus, you'll see that a lot of people kind of talking about it will say, it. oh, well, it could be associated with some symptoms like pain with intercourse, back pain with menstrual cycles, bladder issues, and discomfort using tampons. I would say most patients that I know have retroverted uterus have none of these symptoms. So I don't want you to worry if you have been told you have a retroverted uterus and you're reading about this on a website. You know, you might have those symptoms and you might not, but a lot of people with a retroverted uterus have no symptoms whatsoever. Topic number two, how common is a retroverted uterus? Well, it's about 25% of people have a tilted, or retroverted uterus. I used to tell my patients, oh, it's no big deal. It's like being right or left-handed, but that's actually not correct. I looked it up and 10% of the population is left-handed. So 25% or one in four people actually has a retroverted uterus. So it's more than what I've said, but I've usually tried to say it like, oh, it's no big deal. It's like being right or left-handed. You know, fewer people in the population are left-handed fewer people in the population have a retroverted uterus. It doesn't usually impact your fertility or pregnancy. Oh, I guess I'm giving away <laughs> the next topics, but I really try to reassure people that it's just a normal position and anatomy the vast majority of the time. But keep listening because there are some things that a retroverted uterus can be a signal for. We're going to get back to learning all about what it means to have a tilted or retroverted uterus, but I want to take a moment and just thank you for being here today. This show would not be here without you, and I sincerely want to thank anybody that's taken that extra step to follow the show wherever you're listening. And if you have a moment, give us a review. Engagement means so much and letting us know what you find valuable about the show, topics you'd like us to cover in the future, it all means so much. So please just take a moment, follow the show, give us a review, and no matter what, thank you so much for being here. Let's get back to the show. Topic number three, tilted uterus, retroverted uterus, and fertility. Listen, there is no evidence that shows that somebody with a retroverted uterus has difficulty conceiving. I can see how someone might think, oh, well, maybe it's hard for the sperm to swim a certain way, or, you know, maybe, you know, it's 
difficult to, you know, for the tubes to reach around to get the egg or I could see, you know, we're going to worry about whatever we're going to worry about, but there is no evidence that just having a retroverted uterus has any impact on fertility. It's just the way somebody is born. There is something important to think about though, because sometimes the reason somebody has a uterus that's pointed towards the back is because they do have something making the uterus point towards the back that can cause difficulty getting pregnant. So let me explain. So if you have a uterus that's pointed to the back because it's fixed because of scar tissue, maybe from endometriosis or from a previous pelvic infection, or you have large fibroids, which are benign tumors on the uterus that a lot of people have and they do not always impact fertility, but they could be large enough that it's sort of pushing the uterus back towards the spine. So if somebody has an anatomic issue, an inflammatory issue like endometriosis, scarring, big fibroids that's kind of making them have a retroverted uterus, then it's really the issues that are causing that displacement of the uterus that could be related to fertility, but it is not just someone that has a normal anatomy, you know, just kind of pointed towards the back. In and that in and of itself is not a source of fertility issues. Topic number four, pregnancy and a retroverted uterus. No evidence that having a retroverted uterus impacts your ability to carry a pregnancy at all. The uterus grows, the body changes, organs, everything accommodates a pregnancy. And if you're starting off with a uterus that's pointed back, tilted back, you can still absolutely carry a pregnancy. Topic number five, what do I tell my own patients? Don't worry about it. You know, just because we found that you have a retroverted uterus, a tilted uterus, a tipped uterus, that it's pointed back towards the spine in and of itself, just that issue does not impact your fertility does not impact your chances of having a beautiful baby. Now, if I'm suspicious of other things, like I know that patient has endometriosis, I know they have a history of a pelvic infection, I see other things on an anatomy scan, like a large fibroid that could be displacing it. If we can tell that the uterus is really fixed, like it's hard to move, um, like I'm worried about endometriosis or scarring, and the uterus happens to be pointed backwards, like that's a different story. But for the vast majority of my patients, I say, great, that's just who you are, and it's not going to impact your fertility or your pregnancy. I really hope that you learned something today. I hope you are reassured if you have been told you have a retroverted uterus, a tilted uterus, a tipped uterus, that the vast majority of the time it is not going to affect your reproductive health. I hope that you enjoyed learning all about having a retroverted uterus. So many of my patients have been told this years ago and they are left wondering what it means and it could be causes of fertility or miscarriage or pregnancy outcome issues. And I want you to leave this episode feeling more reassured and empowered to ask your doctor your questions about your anatomy. So I truly hope that this was helpful and I hope you're taking away some valuable information. Thank you again for being here on the show today. I wanna thank my incredible team at Audiotocracy for producing another wonderful episode. Uh, Sincerely, thank you for being here. Take some time, follow the show wherever you're listening. You can have more educational content on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, you can sign up for for my weekly newsletter to learn all about fertility in the news and more reproductive health tips. Uh, The sign up is in the description in this podcast episode. Thank you again for being here. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen. And until next week, stay brave and curious.